you want to know are there any occupational exposure levels known as you know minimal risk levels or otherwise for these cell phones? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, offhand, I think uh, I think either I think carbon disulfide is 30 parts per million. I was going to say, in addition to that, the EPA and the uh, RFC those are well published. Um, however, these levels are actually significantly below that. That's what you have to keep in mind. Every standard that's been provided by any agency has nothing close to these very small levels. And these levels that are established by the agency have many uncertainty factors uh, fixed into them so that uh, uh, realistically they, uh, they are meant to protect workers on an eight hour, a uh, 40 hour week, uh, but uh, uh, there's a lot of safety factors involved there. And so, in terms of uh, relating that to real physiological or toxicological effects, uh, they're many times even beyond the actual permissible exposure limits. But let, let me mention one other thing, because there was a technical symposium last week where Lynn Wilder from the ATSDR and David Krause from the Florida Department of Health both came out publicly and said there was no imminent public health issue and that sulfide gases from Walmart are not present at levels understood to be toxic. And then there was a discussion of a distinction between transient irritant effects, which is the kind of things we've been observing with itchy eyes, bloody noses, potential coughs, and those types of things. And then those that involve damage to cells, tissues, or organs that require healing over time. And at least thus far, um, I believe even the Florida Department of Health is now indicating publicly that the type of a Health effects are the irritant effects, whereas once someone's home is repaired, there do not appear to be any long-term issues from the irritants on the air from Chinese travel. Yeah, and I, I, let me say from a, I'm, I know I'm not an epidemiology study of one, and N equals one is not a good thing to ever base science on, but what, what we're seeing in a large group of clients, roughly 300, where folks have had many of these problems, that when they've moved out, generally they feel better um, and I think the consensus from last week seemed to follow that course that everyone seemed to agree that this was an irritant there's plenty of data on that whether you want to call it objective or subjective um, but that for except for maybe a small group of people who may be susceptible for the most part there seemed to be migrating towards the belief that this shouldn't present as a long-term problem the caveat to all of it is it was seven homes, and there are not. There's just simply not enough data yet. Perhaps at the end of the month we'll see more. But we have a we have, we do have some consensus between what we're seeing anecdotally and what the science seems to be showing. And, and I also want to add, uh, as far as the irritant effects, is that um, there's certain models out there that takes a look at folks with uh, allergies and sensitivities, and usually there's a give anywhere from. 10% to a whole order of magnitude, and, and, and even then, um, we're still at several orders of magnitude before we hit that level. 